This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them. Eric, welcome to Babcock's headquarters and welcome to AMN Drive Time. We're thrilled to have you with us. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for having me. So, Eric, you, uh, uh, you're relatively new in the United States, three years or so. Tell me how you got started in the industry. Sure. Um, I mean, actually pretty easy. Um, I knew since I was a kid that I was passionate about cars and um, combining my passion with my work um, actually was a low-hanging fruit. That's how I um, actually um, took the decision to enter the automotive industry. So I didn't enter the automotive aftermarket industry immediately. I started actually um, as an intern working for Ford Motor Company uh, in Germany um, in 1998. And then uh, did some couples of uh, in internships at um, Porsche, you know, the uh, sports car company. Yeah, so I'm a pretty, pr pretty exciting uh, company. Um, so I've been experiencing a little bit the OEM world and then I really started my career in Germany at Vistion Corporation, okay. uh, so automotive tier one supplier. Sure. And then um, had a couple of stations at Vistion, also at Benteler, another automotive uh, OEM supplier, um, before I then ca came to Scheffler and started my career in the automotive aftermarket industry. And I have to say, I should have started earlier in the aftermarket. Um, I mean, everyone who works in the aftermarket uh, knows it. You get addicted, addicted to, the, to the industry and yeah. to the people. And uh, yeah, so that's how I entered the automotive industry. And how long have you been with Scheffler? Uh, almost 10 years now. Okay. And three years in the U.S.? Three years in the U.S. Uh, being in, responsible. In Charlotte? In Charlotte. Yep. Um, being responsible for the Americas region. So yep. from Canada to Argentina. And um, prior to this, I was responsible for the global strategy of the aftermarket, uh, uh, sitting in the headquarters in Frankfurt, Germany. Got it. And you shared offline early, you're married and you have a nine-year-old daughter. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, tell me, you, you are half French, half German? Yes. And so who are the best drivers, the Americans, the Germans, or the French? Um, I would say... Careful yeah. here, most of our readers are in America. Yeah, I, I know. So, I mean, if I have to compare really the opposites uh, or, yeah, the extreme sides of it, um, I would say there is no better driver. Um, uh, the French ones are really aggressive. I mean, everybody who, you know, um, has experienced Paris know the traffic jam, so no time, no one gets just in front of you, so don't, you don't leave space for anyone to enter. Actually, totally the opposite in the U.S. You know, everybody is relaxed while they drive, um, and the Germans are fast. So, I mean, that's, um, I would say there is no better drivers. Uh, it's a totally different experience in, in you, those countries. Have you had some interesting driving experiences on the Autobahn? Uh, interesting, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the most exciting for me was... Um, Back working at Porsche, um, I had the pleasure to drive uh, the new GT2, and um, I was able to drive at uh, 312 um, kilometers per hour uh, on a German autobahn. So uh, that'd be about 180 miles an hour. Yeah, right? so extremely fast, and that was a great experience. Good for you. So you had, a, a, I'm sure, a lot of great moments in your career. Yes. Are there any that stand out that you're especially proud of? I mean, I would say being where I am today uh, makes me extremely proud. Um, first of all, heading a region, um, uh, it's, a, it's a great achievement. Um, but it's also, you know, leading the team that I've been establishing over the past three years, uh, you know, across the, the region. So not all of them are sitting uh, in the U.S. Um, and really leading uh, my team through the pandemic. I mean, that was, um, I think, the most memorable uh, moment of my career. First of all, um, you know, keeping the employees sa safe across the region, um, keeping the business going. I mean, we were lucky to be deemed essential. 
Uh, I mean, it would have been easy to take the decision to close the operations, yep. you know, so uh, managing business and health, uh, that, was, that was a challenge. And then um, we have been having very strong results in the region, uh, in the region um, and really I'm proud of what the, the team has made and, you know, also thinking about um, our employees in the warehouses, you know, that, uh, you know, made this happen as well. So that makes me proud. Great. So is it fair to say that business is pretty strong right now as we sit here in yes. the summer of 2021? Extremely strong. So, I mean, most of our peers, um, we are all experiencing the, the bounce back um, after the pandemic. Yep. Um, if I compare now even to other regions, I think the, the Americas region is bouncing back extremely strong. Yep. Um, very good for our business, very good for our customers. Um, so um, that, that's true. Business is, is strong. So the pandemic affected lots of businesses in lots of ways, and businesses will learn something thing, uh, did some things that they would never do again, but you know, they had to do them just because they're in the pandemic. And some businesses, you know, we learned some lessons and things that we're going to continue to do coming out of the pandemic. Anything along those lines for you guys, kind of lessons learned from the pandemic or... Yeah, I mean, I think that's n nothing specific right. uh, to Scheffler. I mean, it's um, probably specific to the industry now is the supply chain. I mean, we, the, the supply chain is still disrupted. Um, we, you know, material shortage has been an issue. Yep. Labor, um, you know, is uh, still an issue, um, getting people back to work. Um, so I think that's something where um, politics and industry needs to, to learn out of the pandemic, uh, you know, how to better manage uh, those things. Um, and uh, yeah, it has been a challenge and it's still a challenge. So we hear a lot about mobility in the aftermarket, right? Uh, we had some uh, tire friends in recently and, and what is, to Scheffler, what does mobility mean? So uh, mobility and um, I mean, we, we have our, our claim, you know, we pioneer, pioneer motion. Yep. Um, so mobility means a lot to us yep. um, and definitely means a lot to the aftermarket. I mean, if you think about the essence of the aftermarket is mobility. Yep. So we sure want is. to keep uh, people moving. Uh, and again, coming back to the pandemic, that's really, uh, I mean, the most striking example of how relevant the aftermarket is to keep people moving, uh, you know, um, first responders. And that actually the reason why we are doing this business is to keep people mobile. So right. that's, that's what I say, what I would say means mobility to the aftermarket. And then now going into Scheffler uh, with the, the, the claim we pioneer motion. Um, uh, to advance uh, how the world moves. That's actually our purpose. Um, and is it something, you know, uh, for, first of all, that's the claim that we are now rolling out globally uh, and also promoting. But the fact that Scheffler pioneers motion is not new. I mean, we have a great history in pioneering technology and pioneering motion. Um, I mean, few example, ball bearings uh, being the first one, you know, patented uh, in uh, 1890. Um, the needle bearings, uh, 1950, um, actually patented by the owner um, or the founder of the company, Dr. Georg Scheffler and his brother. And as well uh, on the clutch side with the diaphragm spring uh, clutch uh, that we invented. So, I mean, Technology, pioneering motion is the essence of what Chevla is doing um, and now bringing it uh, into an execution regarding immobility. So, This may be a little redundant, but a lot of forward-thinking aftermarket companies are creating strategies that are going to allow them to address many of the changes quickly come into the aftermarket. And what do you think the most important trends that Scheffler is focusing on today? I mean, we are focusing on three major trends or topics when it comes to, you know, um, defining the strategy um, um, and implementing it, implementing it in the aftermarket. The first one is definite, definitely electrification and e-mobility. So how is this going to move into the aftermarket? The second one is access to data. 
Um, and I think uh, access to data is going, uh, not I think, access to data is actually more relevant from a time perspective, uh, um, more relevant than the immobility portion of it. Um, and then the last one is um, digitalization. And uh, digitalization, I mean, everybody talks about digitalization, but to me it's really um, becoming more efficient uh, as an organization, but also finding efficiencies with our customers to improve the experience with Scheffler for our customers. Drill down a little bit on EV. What, do you, what is your view of EV, is just relate, especially to yeah. North America? What are you thinking about it? What's your... When does it become a meaningful part of the marketplace? Yeah. And so, I mean, um, I'm a numbers guy. So um, uh, let's start with the Scheffler view on the global production of light, vehicle com uh, light, vehicle, uh, light vehicles and how it will evolve. If we look at the current portion of um, uh, internal combustion engine, let's say 88% today, it's still um, internal combustion engine produced cars. The rest is uh, um, hybrid vehicles and um, battery electric vehicles. You're talking about the newly manufactured yes, cars. Yes. About 12% are hybrid or electric. E exactly. Right. So, and then in 10 years of now, uh, and Scheffler has probably an aggressive view on it, we are estimating the market to be 30% um, uh, uh, internal combustion engine, including mild hybrids. 40% will be um, hybrid vehicles and plug-in hybrids, and 30% will be um, battery electric vehicle. So now when it comes to the US, uh, I mean, the relevance um, I think is um, um, also a cultural thing, um, not that uh, aggressive, I think. Uh, I mean, if you see the cars driving on the road today, uh, you know, downsizing, Yes, we are seeing some some uh, movement in that perspective, but still the big cars, towing capacity, you know, that's important for the market. Um, so I think it's going to last longer. But coming back to the to the three types of um, engine uh, that we are going to see in, uh, in in the future, what it means for the aftermarket. Um, I mean, battery electric vehicles. Um, we have time, um, you know, until it enters the the aftermarket. Typically, what we have seen. As of now, it takes 10 to 15 years when we implement a new technology in a vehi newly vehicle right. produced cars until it really comes relevant in the aftermarket. I think it's going to accelerate a little bit, uh, you know, um, uh, from a, a timing perspective due to regulations. So regulations is, is, is key here. This is going to accelerate the movement into battery electric vehicle. Um, and so th the message here, we have time to prepare ourselves to the transition of the technology and also we have time to prepare the workshops on, on how to perform the, the repairs. When it comes now to internal combustion engine, uh, we see the effect already now. So that's why, you know, also from a Scheffler claim, we transition from we pioneer, uh, we uh, mobility for tomorrow. So preparing the company to the transformation into we pioneer motion because we are now in the execution. So the internal combustion engine, due to downsizing um, activities uh, that we are seeing all over the globe, and this is going to put a lot of uh, you know constraints on the um, on the components that we are seeing today. Uh, one example is the uh, stop stop, you know, uh, that we are uh, having nearly on all the cars today. And everybody who opened the hood uh, of a car when the engine starts and stops sees, you know, the, the engine shaking. Um, and everybody can imagine if it's if you drive five miles and you have to start and stop the car ten times, what the the, the constraints will be on the components. And I think it's important as well for our customers, um, you know, to 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 partner with companies like Scheffler, offering a high quality uh, components because the quality of the components is going to become relevant. So budget uh, components versus uh, premium quality, that's going to make the difference. And uh, um, and yeah, and customers need to partner uh, with uh, companies like Scheffler. If we now move into the um, plug-in hybrids and hybrids, um, um, definitely the weight of the battery is also going to affect um, uh, engine and chassis components. Um, so also here, you know, having 
transmission engine and chassis in our portfolio is definitely um, an advantage uh, for our customers working with a company like Scheffler. Got excellent. So that's, um, that's the only, um, um, I would say, product view, but something that we do not to leave, uh, we cannot leave out is the, the workshops. So, I mean, we also need to, you know, help the workshops um, in that transition. And, uh, you know, Scheffler um, has a brand called Rep Expert, uh, that, and we are partnering in, in uh, some of the videos together. Yep. Uh, and that's uh, important as well to not only provide an added value into the aftermarket with uh, high quality products that we have, but also, you know, understanding the end to end and really up the end consumer and the workshop on how to perform the repair. The end consumer is coming, you know, being angry because the car um, uh, has an issue and we want the end consumer to experience, uh, to have a nice experience entering the workshop with, you know, having high quality products placed into his car with a mechanics that, uh, you know, uh, knows how to perform the job. And that's actually our mission when it comes to, to aftermarket. So the consumer holds the technician accountable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, the technician ultimately holds you accountable. Sure. But so uh, that's that's great stuff. So so as a, as a seasoned business leader, what are some of your key principles that you use to guide your team and, and organization? That's a very good question. Um, I mean, first of all, I think uh, trust is um, is, you know, the fundament of um, of a team and you only can create trust if you are transparent so transparent in the way you work transparent in addressing issues um, and then really the ultimate goal is the teamwork so that's what i'm trying to implement in my leadership um, beside accountability and, uh, you know, um, you, you need to be accountable on, on what you, you promise. And then the second aspect of my leadership, and it's extremely important now in my role today, um, because I'm leading a region and a very diverse region. Yes. So, um, and I want that diversity to be represented in my leadership team. So, um, you know, my leadership team is not um, um, entirely sitting here in the U.S. Um, you know, they are also located in Mexico and in Brazil. And I try to respect that diversity to bring that into the organization because we want to be as local as possible, close to our customer and delivering the best um, customer experience to them. Fantastic. So... We sit here in the middle of the summer. We have the big show, Apex, coming up in sure. November. Do you have big plans for that? What are you thinking? Ab absolutely. So first of all, I'm, I'm happy to be back in person at Apex. Uh, I mean, I think we all missed it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to meet customers, see peers, and you know, meet the industry again. And we have some very good announcement to make um, at Apex. So. Uh, be tuned, stay tuned. Uh, yeah. Over the years, you guys have had a uh, pretty substantial display and presence out there. So you would continue that even maybe more so in 2021. Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, uh, being there in person, um, that's important to us. Um, um, I mean, it's also what um, is distinguishing the aftermarket industry from other industry. You know, it's a very human business. So we need to see uh, each other in person yep. and um, and especially here, uh, you know, Apex is extremely relevant for um, our associations, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm uh, part of, um, I serve at the board of the ASA and the MIMA board. Okay. And, um, and definitely it's an important uh, for the um, survival of um, our associations. And during the pandemic, we have seen how valuable associations are for our industry and auto care association as well um, and I mean with the the bill that has been signed uh, last week also going into the right direction for access to data right. uh, you know which um, will hopefully secure um, for the customers to have the choice where their car are going to be re repaired and really um, having a fair aftermarket uh, uh, in the industry so very exciting to be back at Apex. Eric, you just touched on it just a little bit, but you, you kind of mentioned that 
The aftermarket is still a relationship business. Sure. Do you agree? Even, even with the fast pace of business today in 2021, the aftermarket still remains a strong relationship business, right? I, that's probably a big part of your, your, what you bring to the, to the aftermarket, right? No, ab absolutely. Um, I mean, we see the business evolving. I mean, consolidation is uh, playing a role. Um, customers are becoming global. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, coming back to the diversity of the region, we still have family-owned business, uh, yeah. you know, uh, where relationship is extremely experienced, loyalty is experienced, uh, uh, your, uh, loyalty is important yeah. and is a session part of our business. Terrific. So, Eric, tell me, when you go out to the marketplace and you're visiting with customers, which I, sure, I assume you do a fair amount of, when you position Scheffler in the marketplace, how, what do you say? So... Scheffler, we want to be the partner of choice of our customers. And partner of choice is definitely having or offering premium quality and premium products um, in the area of transmission, engine and chassis uh, with the current technology, but also the future technology. So we are securing actually um, a long life of the aftermarket by transitioning technologies from the OE into the aftermarket. And then, as I mentioned earlier uh, already, we are not only focused on technology, um, we are also, uh, also focusing on, on creating added value into the market by training uh, the mechanics on how to perform the repair. So that's what we live at Scheffler. So we have four core values, which are sustainability, innovation, passion and excellence. And I think that's what our customers are experiencing with us uh, when they do business with us. Talk to me a little about your view of data in the aftermarket. So data, a very important uh, topic in two aspects. Um, the first one, uh, talking about digitalization. I mean, sharing data with customers um, again, is going to increase the efficiency and increase the experience uh, of working uh, with Scheffler um, for our customers. So that's that's one aspect. Um, and as I mentioned, we are focusing on digitalization when it comes to um, you know um, outlining the strategy of the Scheffler automotive aftermarket for the next ten years. And then I also briefly touched on it is access to data, um, you know, from uh, from an industry perspective. And that's where Scheffler Automotive Aftermarket, um, um, you know, always played a major role in um, having an active part um, in the industry to fight for a fair aftermarket. So we have several board seats in different associations around the globe. So I mentioned ASA, MIMA, mm -hmm. um, but we also have um, association seats uh, back in Europe and in China. Um, and uh, that's again where we pioneer to find an industry solution to give access to the entire industry uh, to those data. And that's, that's definitely a key aspect of um, our doing every day at Chevla. We are really glad to have you with us at our, at our headquarters in Ohio. And we wish you all the best moving forward and seeing a lot more of you. Uh, thank you very much, Bill, for having me. And uh, let me use the opportunity to thank you and your team for what uh, you are doing for the industry and the entire added value that you are bringing. You are a terrific partner to Scheffler, and uh, we are very happy to, to be here with you today. Thank you. This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented.